So you just beat uh, Lords of Shadow, huh? Lords of Shadow, Castlevania. It was pretty cool. You know, I started that game uh, a long time ago and played the first couple hours, and it did not really impress me. Mm -hmm. But I kept feeling like I should go back. And I finally did, and I'm glad I did. The game right in the middle gets really juicy. And it's good that you got it, because there's a bunch of uh, Lords of Shadow related stuff coming on the way. Um, you got Mirror of Fate. I don't know if you know much about this game. I mean, obviously I was, I was at E3, so I saw you know, some of the stuff in passing. They had the big trailer showing up at the, at the Konami booth. and It's doing something really cool that as a Castlevania fan, I've loved all the games. I've loved the story of the Belmonts and everything. Well, story, I use the term loosely. The story in Castlevania is a mess. But what makes Mirror of Fate interesting is that, spoiler, Gabriel Belmont is Dracula. And it covers four of his kin. So you have like Trevor Belmont, Simon, um, and even Alucard, which implies that he had uh, relations with a human lady. Presumably uh, Marie before she I mean, well, here's the bites thing. It. Marie bites the dust before Gabriel ever becomes a vampire. Mm -hmm. So that means that he would have had to, in order to conceive Alucard, to sire him. You sure? Um, it would have had to have been someone post Marie's death, so. Sure, but maybe not the other Belmonts. Right. Right? No, all the other Belmonts. Are that, that, humans. Yeah, that line so. could have started. So what's interesting about Mirror Fate is we're going to get a concise look at like the Belmont bloodline and how it interacts with Dracula in one game as opposed to like all of the games sure. and all the disjointed storylines. I mean, when Lords of Shadow was first announced, my understanding was that it was almost going to be a beginning, like an origin story to the larger Castlevania mythos. Yeah. Uh, and the way they've really shaped it, it's, it's different than that. It, it, it really is almost a retelling of the Castlevania storyline with some of the same characters and a lot of the same sort of themes that they're playing around with, but they're kind of doing a whole new thing. You know, Alucard might not be the same Alucard that we not know exactly. from like Symphony. Symphony of the Night. The producer, David Cox, confirmed that it's Alucard's also going to be uh, play a big part in Lords of Shadow 2. He shows up at the end of the trailer. David Cox also said that they want this trilogy to pretty much be all that Mercury Steam has to do with Castlevania. So they're kind of putting their all into Lords of Shadow 2 and Mirror of Fate, and they kind of want to do us the concise origin story for Dracula, get in there, wow people, and get out. I was surprised to hear you, um, hear you say that because it seems like the setup, particularly with the epilogue at the end of Lords of Shadow, seems to imply this, this really grand tale that's going to stretch across maybe dozens of games or What's something like, an like that. Assassin's Creed style like yeah. revelation. Yeah, and in fact, Assassin's Creed was one game that occurred to me that they could like start doing flashbacks from the future to all these previous centuries where Gabriel is, is slowly descending into what we see him as in that epilogue. But it sounds like that's at least not what Mercury Steam has planned. They want to do everything together and kind of have it be these three games, one of which is handheld. And that's it. We got a lot to look forward to as Castlevania fans, and I'm excited for you, especially uh, just coming off the heels of being Lords of Shadow. So I am more stoked about that franchise now through the combination of having actually finally gotten through it and seeing where they're going with it than I thought I was going to be. If you haven't beaten Lords of Shadow, you definitely should. This is the time to, to pick up on it. And totally. Play it. Totally.